Hey everybody, I just wanted to show my custom weathering job that I did on my uh, Galaxy's Edge R2-D2. These, the, these are the droids that you can only get from Galaxy's Edge in Disneyland. Um, they're all exclusive to there. And um, uh, this one I, I'll probably never get to Disneyland, so I decided to just get this one online. And um, when you get them, they're, they're relatively clean. I think they're all kind of painted a little differently, but I wanted to make mine look a little more realistic, more like a model and not so much a toy. But as you can see here, I really tried to make him look like he did in the movie where he's really dirty and a little more realistic. You can see the side detail on his legs all the way down here. Try to make the feet look dirty since that's kind of the area where most of the dirt would build up along the bottom there, over here, up on his head, and then here on the side, let me turn him, you can see his other, his other feet here. Um, this one wasn't too heavily weathered, which is good because that way I could kind of do my own thing on it. Let me turn him around this way. On the back, you can see kind of how I did the back area here. So you can really see the nice detail. The head over here, I tried to make it look nice and dirty along the edge here. Up here on the top, near the little blue panels that he's got here. So the way I went, ahead, the way I did this is I I built a lot of model kits and I kind of did the same weathering I do on that. So what I did is I I start out with a. Uh, this stuff here, this is Tester's clear coat. It's just a clear coat. You can get it at a hobby shop or Hobby Lobby. And I spray all this completely all over the model. And then, oh, actually, before I did that, I actually masked off all these areas, like this here, the little, these are where the lights are here, and then his eye. I masked it all off so that I don't get any spray on there. I also masked off his, uh, his vents, because that's where the speakers are. And then I masked off his wheels because you don't want to get those all gummed up with spray. So I, I masked all those off. And then also here where the switch is and the um, the pairing button, that's why it's clear clean right there. That way you don't get those messed up from spraying anything on them. So after you get them all masked off, then you can use this stuff. This is the clear coat. Spray them completely down, get them completely clear coated, let that dry. And then after that, I wanted to try to get like these little panels, the little lines right in here. I want to try to get all these all all done. So I, what I use for that is this. This is Tamiya Panoline Paint. Um, when you, It's like a really liquidy, uh, thin down paint. It's almost like ink. And the lid actually has a brush on it. And then you just take the brush and you just kind of put little drops here and there. And it'll actually spread out into these little, into these lines. It's really cool how it works. And then I do I do the whole thing like that. After it's all dry, then I took a Q-tip and some lighter fluid, and that actually uh, just wipes it off. So you can clean it up. Any little dots that you had on here, you can clean up with the uh, the lighter fluid. I think you can use min uh, mineral spirits as well. And then um, after I got them all panelined, um, I spray them with the dull coat, which is this stuff. So it's Tester's dull coat. Looks just like the clear coat, except it's dull. And I spray a, a good coat of this, or maybe a couple of coats of this, um, completely on them. And that gets rid of the shine now, and also it locks in the panel line paint, so that's all in there, and you can touch it, and it won't come off. And then the next step is to get all this little, all this dirt and stuff on here. So the, what I did with that is I take some black artist chalk, or you can use pastels or whatever these are. Um, you can uh, I, I use black. Um, you can get any color you want, but I take a, a modeling knife and I just kind of scrape it onto like a piece of paper. Oops, sorry about that. And then uh, it turns it into a nice pile. And then I use this brush right here. This is like a it's like a cosmetic brush. It's got this really nice. Let me see if I can focus on it here. It's got this really nice angle and it's nice and thin, and that's perfect for getting into these little corners. So you can just kind of get in here like this and just kind of get in these little corners and get that dirt in there and kind of and then you you know kind of get it in there where dirt would build up and then you can also smooth it down and kind of blend it in really good and then you can just do this all over now this brush 
Um, I found it at the local grocery store. It's by a company called Wet n Wild. It's like a ladies uh, angled liner brush, I guess. But they're perfect for this sort of thing. And so I just did sections at a time. I did the front part. And then after you're done doing all the panel line painting, you spray it with some more of the dull coat, or that's gloss, the dull coat. <laughs> And then uh, put a couple of coats on there, like let the first coat dry, and then put a second coat on. And then that will lock in all this stuff, and it, that way you can touch it and it won't come off. And then from there, I did the back, and then did, I did the same thing here. I did all of that, and then dull coated a couple of layers. Then I did the head, and I also used a sponge on here. I took a sponge and just kind of dabbed it. On here and that way you can kind of get a, a broader area but it really helps kind of give it a nice dirt texture on here you can really see how that sponging technique really works really good I mean right there it looks great I love how that turned out and some of these wider kind of bigger areas you can kind of sponge all this too just to you don't want to overdo it you don't want to do too much of it but you want to kind of even it out and make it look really good I mean see how that turned out right there it looks really nice so I um, just did the back and uh, then I did the head and then each leg separately. And then um, I finally did the, the bottom, the middle leg was last. I did that one last and then this bottom section here. I really love the way that turned out. Looks really good. And then just kind of, you know, just do sections at a time. Don't rush, just take your time. It turns out looking really good when you're, when you're done. But when you're all done, I mean, he just looks fantastic. He's like, uh, he looks just more realistic. He looks more like a model and not uh, a toy. Because uh, that was the part that was just bothering me. I just I wanted him to look more real. But as you can see, um, he's he works just fine. So yeah, uh, that way you don't mess up the electronics by masking everything off. When you're all done, just take all that masking tape off. That stays nice and shiny. His eyes. And the lights come on and still looks really good. The speaker's not blocked up. And he turns out really good when you're all done. It looks so much better. So if you're thinking about customizing your, your robot, whether you made an R2 or whichever droid you made there, and you want to make him look more, a little more customized, a little more realistic, um, that's a technique you can use. Um, if you're thinking about doing that, I hope this helped. And maybe you can try out your own kind of technique. Maybe you want to paint the whole thing or do other kind of techniques on it. But I think he turned out pretty good, and I'm really happy with it. So if uh, this helps you out there, I hope it helps you. And thank you for watching. Have a good day.